Hello, this session will discuss the role of leadership in healthcare organizations, exploring the different factors that influence organizational structure, culture, politics, and power. The unique American political and social outlook has influenced the development of American health care's organization structure. Most nurses work as employees, so it is important to look at the types of healthcare organizations that exist. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to meet the following lecture objectives. Identify the organizational characteristics that define magnet nursing services. Identify and compare characteristics that are used to differentiate healthcare organizations. And define power and describe it at the personal, professional, and organizational level. There are three major institutional providers, acute care hospitals, long-term care facilities, and rehabilitation facilities. Even though many physicians have evolved externally from hospitals over the past few decades, hospitals remain the largest employer of nurses. There are key characteristics that describe the different healthcare organizations. These are types of services, referring to the general or special care. The care further may be described by disease entity or patient population. General services have broad spectrum populations and diseases they care for. These include community health departments and general hospitals. Specialty care may be age-related, such as elder care or pediatrics, gender-related, such as women's health services, or disease or diagnosis based such as psychiatric or burn or oncology. Further discussion about the types of services will be covered in the next slide. Length of care is focused first on episodic and distributive care. Distributive is the ongoing care that isn't precipitated by some event or condition. Episodic could describe acute care facilities. Acute care typically mean, refers to stays expected to be less than 30 days. Chronic or long-term care service refers to those services expected to be longer than 30 days. Note that in order to provide um, well-integrated care, many organizations have acute care hospitals, long-term care facilities, home health services, and rehabilitative services operating within the same structure in order to meet patient care needs. Ownership type will be discussed in, the next, in a separate slide. Teaching status refers to whether the organization, organization is affiliated with medical and or nursing schools. Teaching institutions have different missions and resources than non-teachers. They have access to state-of-the-art research, technology, and quality care providers. Quality of care and cost is usually higher. Accreditation of the organization is another factor that determines the quality of care. The Joint Commission, um, previously named the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations, now known as the Joint Commission, is the national organization that develops standards and accredits healthcare organizations. Accreditation is one of the ways hospitals can be certified to receive Medicare and Medicaid payments. The Joint Commission initially emphasized standards for how hospitals should be structured and set up for accreditation. It has broadened its approach and identified patient and organization outcomes to be reviewed for quality. The care services provided in health organizations are typically described on a continuum of health care from wellness to illness as primary, secondary, or tertiary care. Primary emphasis on the promotion of health and prevention of illness or disability. Secondary care emphasizes detection and early intervention in illness to prevent further illness and disability. And tertiary care provides restorative or rehabilitation services for patients with chronic or irreversible conditions. Ownership of healthcare organizations is another characteristic that determine the legal, business, and mission entity of the organization. The three main ownership types of healthcare organizations are public, private, nonprofit, and for-profit. 
Public health care organizations include tax-supported agencies at the national, state, and local level. The boards of these institutions are appointed through political processes and are responsible to elected officials and taxpayers. Private nonprofit institutions are controlled by voluntary boards and often have a mix of pay and charity patients. The excess of income over expenses, another called profit in these organizations, is redirected into the organization to further the mission. For profit institutions may have a paid board of directors and they are owned by individuals, partnerships, corporations, or multi systems. The key point is that their excess of income over expense is known as profit and is available to stockholders as dividends. This type of institution may also be called proprietary. Healthcare institutions' existence, growth, and development is driven by many factors, mainly economic, social, and demographic factors. In regard to economics, we read in the papers and in the online news that the percentage of the gross domestic product devoted to health care continues to rise. We also see a growing population of people needing health care services, whether through survival of people who a century ago would have died through increased population numbers or through change, the changes in employment benefits that limit the amount of coverage or direct the conditions under which a health benefit can be used. There are also general factors such as inflation, which makes wages and products more expensive in healthcare, and thus may influence people in their choices about spending. Finally, there is a direct reduction in governmental payment that influences how organizations can operate. Social is the next area. As the baby boomer generation retires, they are likely to become activists about the conditions and quality of services in healthcare. Patients in general are becoming more proactive and often come with a predetermined diagnosis and treatment plan. The issue of whether health care is a privilege or a right has not been resolved and will continue as a social issue. Demographic and geographical distribution of the population and services has long been an issue for health care organizations. The struggle of rural hospitals to survive and the intensity with which rural communities recruit a primary care provider are two examples of how geographical distribution is a force in the health care delivery. Disparity of care based on income is well documented. The numbers of immigrants in the United States also pose challenges, especially in terms of providing culturally competent care. Increasing numbers of uninsured populations are clustered around particular health care provider organizations. Also, we already are aware of the influence of the elderly, both from the numbers who will expect services and from their activism. Think of a local health care organization, you may be able to see how these forces play out directly in shaping the services provided, the hours of access, the cost, the availability of products, and so forth. Organizational designs are often classified by these characteristics. Complexity concerns the division of labor, how specialized that labor is, the number of hierarchical levels, and the geographic dispersion of the unit. Division of labor and specialization refer to designation of processes in the task. An organizational chart is a graphic representation of the work unit and the reporting relationship. Hierarchy refers to the lines of authority and responsibility and how distant the patient side nurse is from the chief nursing officer and the chief executive officer. Chain of command refers to the hierarchy and is the vertical view of organizational charts. Formalization refers to the amount of structure an organization has in terms of rules or policies. Often, highly specialized organizations with lots of professionals of little formalization. Centralization refers to where decisions are made. If everyone has to ask someone else, the organization is highly centralized. If the organization is highly decentralized, each employee is charged with decision-making authority to provide the best in patient care. Highly centralized organizations delegate responsibility without authority to act. Patient side nurses or bedside nurses often 
are often frustrated with this approach because they see the decisions to be made involving the care is being provided. This slide reviews the advantages and disadvantages of bureaucratic or organizational design. The advantages are there are clear lines of authority. There are also clearly defined authority and responsibility, clear rules and regulations, task specialization and division of labor, impersonality of relationships, technical efficiency, and promotion is based on competence. The disadvantages of the bureaucracy organizational design is that it predisposes authoritative leadership style. It uses rewards and punishments and results in competition for the advancement of an individual's interest. Aloofness secondary to specialization, faithless decision making, impersonal management, lack of a flexibility, lack of accountability, and there are an establishment of an organizational barriers. Organizations can be structured in a number of ways. Understanding these common types of structures allow nurses to better understand how to achieve their objectives within the organization. There can be functional or service line organizational structures. Functional structures are ones organized around specialties. Service line structures or product lines focus on various functions to produce a specific service or product. Matrix structures are complex and integrate both functional and service considerations. The manager of a matrix structural unit reports to both a functional manager and a service line manager. Flat structures focus on the delegation of decision making to the professionals doing the work. They have full authority to take action without seeking input from others. Shared governance is, is well documented in the literature. It is found in many hospitals that have achieved magnet status because it ensures that the person closest to the issue is always the one solving the problem and then converting the system. These may be called professional practice models. Nurses at every level play a role in the decisions that affect nursing activity throughout the system. Nurse managers move out of traditional industrial model roles into collegial models, becoming moderators of the service process. This is usually defined by a structure of rules or bylaws. There are numerous options that exist for the way in which nursing services can be organized. It is important to think about the characteristics of each type and how those fit with the way in which you would act and act your professional career. Organizations do change, however, it is a slow and deliberate process. 